if you're farming and trying to make a living out of the land, you've got to be resilient. Like you've got to be able to make the best of a bad thing, I suppose, a lot of the time, yeah. We're here today because I suppose the drought started it, then the fires added to it, and then the floods actually created probably the biggest headache we've ever had on the property. We had seven floods in 18 months, and and like as far back as rain, rainfall records go, that hasn't happened before, you know, that's just off the wall. So hundreds of mills at a time, and unfortunately that has done a lot of damage in the creeks and the tributaries. Yeah, it's as, um, a bit of an eye-opener down here. Pretty devastating when you go walk down there and you have a look what's happening in the creek. It's just made a real mess. It's a bit like a war zone and uh, it's uh, yeah, been devastated. When we had the big floods and we saw on our property sand deposited above the level of our fences that we will never be able to move, it sort of became obvious that this is actually pretty serious. And it has a bit of a bit of an impact on your mental health too, I suppose, when you, you come down and see, you know what you had before and now you know what you've well, you can see what you've got now. Where there was topsoil, we got stone. And look at those beautiful trees, just gone. And when we talked to neighbours and we saw what was happening and how much change had happened in the creek, then this grant program came up. It was sort of a no-brainer, it just all gelled together. And we had a, a way forward to maybe get some work done, which we took. Uh, we're all in a partnership together on this project. Yeah, we're all trying to come, get the same outcome, trying to improve the creek. Uh, this is some of the sites we've pinpointed already to look at. In this instance, we've um, used some large rock to put at the toe of a bend that's starting to erode and a little bit further upstream in this same property, um, we're going to put in some, some log structures that help the creek to um, control the grade on the creek so that there aren't big drops in the creek causing causing erosion and, and leading to soil loss. Beauty, no worries. You know, we might have lost 50 tonnes of soil down here, but if we get another few floods over it, that might become 500 tonnes of soil. The trees go in and then, you know, it just, it, it compounds over time and and, um, and then you get major, really big problems after that. So it's really important when you've got a good piece of creek to fix small problems early for that reason. Fixing the sills, fixing the creek bed doesn't stop there. So that's why we've built around it hands-on workshops, all sorts of additional add-ons to get the whole community much more aware of what they can do, even in their small backyards, in preventing weeds, doing all the sorts of things that one does, but also being aware much more of the climate change and the changes that we're all going to go through, whether we like it or not. You look at the climate modelling, so the estimates for 30 years from now and 60 years from now, that we're going to have a, a slight increase in temperature, less rainfall overall and lots more short duration high intensity events. So it's a real problem for our groundwater systems in this part of Australia. We have to do something very soon. The real agents for change are the, are the landholders or the land care groups or the community groups or the frog watch people or the water watch people, you know, the people that actually take time out of their own days or make it their vocation to be doing these sorts of things. Just um, grab some shots of um, the cattle in the creek here where we have livestock accessing the creeks and waterways. They graze and they're often grazing, regenerating um, vegetation that would otherwise you know, hold soil together, hold banks together. Um, and th those, that vegetation is really important for the long-term resilience of a, of a creek system. Uh, so it gives it greater strength to withstand a flood event or multiple flood events in, in the case of this catchment. Cows are 600, 500, 600 kilo most of the time. So they're big, heavy animals that basically just got sharp hooves. So they're, whatever they're doing, they're doing damage to it. The intention of this project is to get a, this creek system fenced out and then help assist the landholder with um, infrastructure, pipe systems and trough systems to get the cattle sourcing their water from the paddock rather than the waterway. And that solves the problem. It'll be a benefit for us, so, or, and a benefit for the property, so, so be all good. The land care group here has done an excellent job of engaging every landholder on this stretch of the river. I've never heard so many farmers talk about bed control structures. Landcare Group's done a great job. They're getting everyone together.
and it's really important. And we're all coming together with our various interests, with a common cause. And yeah, that's a pretty good feeling. It's a very good feeling. And, and you can achieve a lot. To me, the small community group, they say grassroots, but it, it is actually the root of the whole community. This project has been driven by volunteers working with nature to get the best out of the land. So this is just a great project, great community involvement, long-term vision. Even one tree is going to make a difference because it's one tree of life. And it just always fills your heart with joy, doesn't it, when you see new trees growing? I think they're going to be here hopefully another 100 years. To be planting for the future like this, that's a wonderful thing. And to feel as they at least doing something to combat climate change. The quicker you get those roots down to a good deep level, the quicker your seedling will establish. If you think of roots as a net, so the tree sends down its net of roots and then all the soil and all the sand and all the cobble that are in the banks, it helps bind them together and secure them in place. And that's what we want to do. We want to stop the bank from eroding away from when the water comes rushing down the mountains and coming running down the creek. We want to try and hold the bank in place. And this is what our trees can do. So we have a thousand plants sending down a thousand root systems, which will ultimately mean that very large sections of the creek will have more bank stabilisation, but then you're also planting a diversity of plants that flower and there's mid-storey plants which are really good for like the endangered birds, so you're potentially creating new habitat for species. The nursery for the recuperation and the regeneration. Isn't it beautiful, yeah? Hive of activity. Yeah, it's good it's all coming together. Fantastic actually. I think we're learning and we're learning to get involved with nature and that's what this project's all about. I think Upper Dua Catchment Lanky Group is just an inspiration because they've powered on through so many uh, different disaster events and yet they've still delivered a fantastic project. There's multiple sites along the creek here which have been restored, thousands of trees have gone in and it's just going to be, yeah, uh, just a fantastic asset for the community going forward. So bravo to Upper Dua Catchment Lane Care. We've made a good start on it and if we can continue on with that, I think that's a great thing. We've got a lot of work to do in the next few years. It'll go. I'll go and put this one up together. Growing things for the future, so happy to be part of that. Hopefully a big tree one day. <laughs>